All right, Whitney, you just passed the test. How did it go? It went fairly well. Um, I The biggest thing I struggled with was time management in the first half. It wasn't until I got my reminder email from Pearson View Centers, uh, or, or I guess it was from them, about how you get through the first section and you have to review those questions and then that's it. You can't come back to those. So I wasn't prepared for that in my time strategy. Um, so when that actually happened, I, I had tried to formulate a plan and then I felt like I didn't take enough time to review the first half of my flag questions. So then I had an abundance of time in the second half to review <laughs> yeah. my flag questions. Like I had an extra 20 minutes, which felt like a lifetime. There you go. That's cool. So how, what was the score? What was the score like? At the end, of, like how well did you do at the end? Like you got like above target, target. What, how did you do it on the test? Oh, at, my total cumulative score was right in the middle of the target. That's good. It's not bad at all. And not so bad. like, yeah. Um, when you think about like the preparation and stuff, what was the biggest thing that make a, made a positive difference for you? What were some of the things that helped pull things together in your mind? Well, I mean, immediately, as soon as I signed up for your e-course, which is where I started before mm -hmm. I did the accelerator, two days into the e-course, I was like, oh, I'm totally going to pass this. <laughs> and that for me, it was like up to that point, I had spent four to six months trying to read through the PMBOK guide, getting through a canceled exam because of COVID and then rescheduling because I didn't feel like I was ready when it was going to be for the second date. And then I started talking to my fiance and saying, I need something else. This is not working. Um, and I wasn't really feeling great. I felt like, you know, I might just go ahead and pass this the first or fail this the first time and then, <laughs> and then try harder and then try to take it again. And then, um, and then I took your course and I got, well, I got started and then um, just the, the visual, the illustrations and the case studies and just right off the bat, your enthusiasm, you're yeah. like, you know, hey, you're super excited about it. And then I loved how, you know, at the end of every video, just that small dose of confidence, like, hey, you're going to do this, you're going to pass the PMP exam, you know, and then as soon as I got into the course, and I just kind of chatted on the group chat and like, hey, I'm just getting started in this thing. And one of your instructors replied and was like, welcome, future PMP. And I was like, oh, <laughs> oh yeah. Right, what actually happened? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, part of it's like just putting yourself in the position where you're like, yeah, I can do this. It's no big deal. Um, yeah, exactly. That's, that's cool. So like uh, talk to me a little bit about kind of, I mean, you said the videos and stuff, like specifically you spent like months doing the PMBOK. Like what are what is something that somebody else out there can – like, how would you get across, like, the, how would you break through to them? Or wh what kind of things broke through to you, if you will? Like, how did it make sense? Other than enthusiasm is one thing, but, like, what, what concepts or I'm trying to get across, like, what helped you? I'm sorry, it's late. No, it's fine. Um, well, I really liked the PM1 view. Okay, and that's cool. And how I just had quick access into everything um, and the way that it was organized by logical flows instead of, the just the knowledge areas because when I had started reading through the pen block I was like doesn't make sense how do I connect the dots between initiating and closing um, and so I just think the way that you had the whole thing organized and then again that quick access and then being and then having those mini quizzes to be able to just re quiz myself at the end of every video to see how much am I actually retaining this information I would actually take the quiz review all the questions and answers, even the ones I got right, I would read the explanations of why I got it right and why the other answers were not right. Mm -hmm. And then if I did not score above 80, I followed your the advice, you know, the tips that tells you on there, retake it until you're continually making 80 or better. And that's what I would do for everyone before that's I went on to the next topic. That's awesome. Uh, and then like later on, you got involved in the accelerator and some of the coaching call stuff like that. What was that experience like? Was it helpful? Talk to me a little bit about that if you could. Yes, it was helpful. The coaching calls were great. Once I got on and I could see how other people were rationalizing through the questions, it started to help me think about things in a different perspective and understand things from someone else's 
mm-hmm. point of view. And then also just hearing the mentors that were leading the call, like you were on one, Salvador was on another one. Mm-hmm. And just the way that you guys logic through, you know, these are the things you want to think about. Um, that, that really helped me because mm-hmm. I think that I had kind of a super analytical view on the question and trying to zoom in too much sometimes. Mm -hmm. And then on the coaching calls, I got to kind of understand how to sort of zoom out and look at the question from a broad view and really understand where are we actually going in this question. That's a good point. That's really good. I'm glad you had that perspective. I mean, um, you studied for a while, obviously with us and then before us, is there any, now that you've passed, is there any like misconception that you think people might have about the study process that you now have a realization on? I think the misconception is that it takes longer than it actually does. Oh, okay. Because obviously if you, well, what I did was I applied for my exam and set my exam date so that I'd have something to drive towards Mm -hmm. where I think what I picked up on through my studies and through the coaching calls is that some people I hadn't done that and I was like well how can you study if you don't know where you're going like what your mm-hmm. deadline right. is um and so I don't even remember like what point I was getting to but I think um, <laughs> is it the time like the time didn't have yeah, to be as yeah, long as you thought yeah. yeah so um just just knowing that it does not take a year long and all that because if if you apply and you're approved and see i was audited and i read that like 10 percent of people's applications are audited Mm -hmm. and so obviously if they approve you you have the experience you have enough to be able to study for you know i guess it's different for everybody but you know for me it took eight weeks but uh you know some people i see it do it 10 days whatever but yeah I I don't think it needs to take a year or even six months to get ready for it. Right on. That's cool. Um, So what was the audit process like? Audit process. That was fun. Um, So I, (laughs) so I had to get three LORs letters of recommendation and I had to uh, fill out a form showing all of different domains and how my 4,500 hours worth of experience was attributed to each of the different domains, my specific projects. And then I had to actually have that filled out and give it to my three people that were gonna sign off and say, this is legit. And then they actually, I couldn't get it back from then. Mm, They they sent it off. They had to send it off, sign sealed, like with their signature on the sealed envelope and send off. And then I just had to wait and like hope those people actually would say yeah this is right this is what she actually did oh wow so um looking back on it was there were you prepared for it in a sense the the way you built your application or anything or was it kind of a pain in the butt or like what was it like overall i was actually prepared for it because when i was reading through the application process i had gone in my one note and made notes all about how my time breakouts needed to be in terms of showing that I had experience in the mm-hmm. 10 knowledge areas and across initiating the closing. So I kind of already had that sort of strategy worked out where I said, okay, I need 4,500 hours. I got to show this. And then I worked backwards from there and divided it up and was able to look back on my experience and then kind of fill in the slot of this will satisfy that and, and so on. That makes sense. That's cool. Um, so, you know, what are you going to do with all, like, now, I was going to ask you, what did you get the PMP to begin with? Like, why did you get it? So the funny story is I actually have it right here. So five years ago, I bought this book, Project Management Checklist for Dummies. Okay. I even signed my name in it, Whitney Bell, 2015. <laughs> <laughs> At that time, I really hadn't had a lot of project management Mm -hmm. and I just I put it down as you can see this book has not been it didn't look well read no No. and I I I originally gave up on it because I looked at all the requirements that it takes to get the certification and I thought well I probably I'll never get this I'm not going to ascend the ranks with these people yeah and then just my career just one thing led to another and I I worked in only functional organizations I've never worked under a PMO or Mm -hmm you know, everything's just weak matrix or yeah. weak matrix to functional. Oh, yeah. And um, 
it December of last year, I just started thinking about it and I said, well, I need a way to make myself stand out competitively because I live in Fayetteville mm -hmm. and I was applying for jobs in Raleigh, which is extremely competitive yeah. uh, between Raleigh and Charlotte. And so I said, well, I've actually done over three years worth of project management now. So why don't I go for this? And I think that this might be the feather in the cap that I need to get my career to the next level. And then um, I went for it. And the, awesome. just the reason I, I did it is just because I'm addicted to accreditations and learning and yeah. I just can't stop learning. <laughs> well, that's good. Um, and so now that you're doing projects and you're working and you also have the PMP and you went through the study process, do you think you're a better project manager or do you look at things differently uh, since you've been through the course and the PMP thing? Oh, 100%. I absolutely do. I've already been put on tasks at my job. Actually, in my job description, it does say PMP is preferred. And okay. I kind of glossed over that three years ago when I took the job. Yeah. And then um, last year when I was considering like, okay, I'm going to go for this. I reread my job description and I was like, oh, they're actually looking for this. Um, and so now it, it definitely, the biggest thing that I think that has helped is understanding the integration between the knowledge areas. And um, that's awesome. Yeah, it definitely, it definitely has helped me stand out in my organization. And my boss is kind of like, okay, now that you have this, because he actually has a master's that focused in project management or something. So he kind of understands what that means to have your PMP. Mm -hmm. So That's now good. it's kind of like setting me up saying, you know, get prepared because this is what I want you to work on now. Oh, goodness. All right. Well, that's like and a little, a little scary, but it's pretty good. Yeah. The good night. Exciting. It's exciting to have new opportunities. Well, that's awesome. Well, I think it's cool that you came on and yeah. So like we always ask somebody like there's a lot of people that will probably watch this and say like, hey, she's a lot like me. Um, I want to do what she did. And so for somebody out there that wants to get the PMP and see themselves in you, like how would you recommend that they prepare or go about this? What would you tell them? Well, I would say for me, what worked was finding different ways to get the information in. Mm -hmm. So I had your Audible book, which I listened to in my car, in my car on the commute to work. Okay. Um, I had the digital copy of the book, which came with the course. Mm -hmm. I had the digital copy of the Pembok. I had your e-course. And I'm just extremely thorough. So, I mean, <laughs> I did it all of those ways. And I mean, even as I was watching your videos, I had notebooks and I was like pausing and taking okay. notes and just all the way through, just trying every way that I could. Cause I know that I'm more of a hands-on kinesthetic type of learner. I even had a huge wall of post-its with the matrix on yeah, it. I saw those, yeah. Facebook group. yeah, that's pretty crazy. Hindsight, I was like, oh, that might not have been the best use of my time, but it right. did help me kind of visualize. But, um, you know, one of the things that I wanted to revisit that really helped from the seven day accelerator was, mm -hmm. and, and I saw it through and through over and over again on the exam was the whole understanding those keywords that they use at the end, to, end of the sentence what would the project manager do or what yeah. would the project manager do next? Like how you say, are you making a lateral move? Are you looking down? Mm -hmm. And I think that being able to discern where you are, like what you're actually doing, are you focusing on what you're doing now or what you're, you're doing next? Mm -hmm. I think that is a critical topic to understand. And I know that I got tripped up on a lot of those because I would think in my head, okay, because they get, you know, they give you sometimes four good answers and you're yeah. just like, well, any one of these would work. Um, <laughs> so it, it was kind of tricky, like understanding what are they asking? Is it now or next? Or it's confusing sometimes, but. Uh, that's all right. I mean, you got through it, so that's good. And I think that's really, really good to like, you got to understand your own brain and like, obviously you're super duper detailed and you like the kinesthetic side of it. So uh, you brought all those things in there and made it work for you. So I think if someone follows that and kind of is true to themselves, then, you know, things will align and they'll be smiling like you. So that's good. Uh, well, Whitney, I really, really appreciate you taking the time. I know you got a lot going on and uh, we're really proud of how you did. And if there's anything we can do to help you here going out, uh, please let us know. All right. Absolutely. Thank you. And thank you for all you do and for everything that you put together. 
um, before I signed up for your course, I did a thorough analysis <laughs> a comparison of like the top 10 e-courses out there. And yeah. I, re I looked at every single one of them, even though I had already like found your course, I just hadn't yeah. signed up for it yet. So I just want everyone out there to know that I did the analysis already. <laughs> I've done the comparisons. I'm, I'm a former analyst and I thought it was the best option. That's so, awesome. And obviously, it, it, the results proved it. So that's very true. Uh, well, that means a lot. Uh, we'll keep working hard and keep making stuff so that'll take care of everybody. So appreciate awesome. it, Whitney. Have a good night. All right. Thank you. You too. Hold on for a second. Uh, cool, man. I am like almost. I like. I've been. I haven't slept in like a long time. Oh gosh. Uh, I mean, I I've slept like I've been like sleeping like three hours. Uh, do you know? Thank you very much for for meeting. Um, do you know anybody else that we can help? I mean, I'm still trying to push John Dyson over the ledge. Okay. I, he's, I mean, he literally, his office is right next to mine. I see him every day. Um, he hasn't said anything else about it since okay. last week when I sent the email, but I'm going to keep working on it. Okay. So, yeah. Do what you can do. Yeah. And if you know anybody else, let us know. And then uh, we're going to okay. keep adding like, so like uh, if PMI wouldn't have changed the exam, I would have had a lot more freedom to do this, but I got all these people that have passed and like they're on going to the next thing and they want like, Hey, can you do these other courses? So once we get like agile and these other courses going, I'll let you know. And we'll just keep, if you have ideas like, Oh, I want to take this course. Like you said, certifications or other things, uh, let me know and we'll try to put it on the docket and I'll, I'll build it and teach it. Yeah. I mean, agile is definitely my next move. I've already told my fiance, like, I'm already looking at my next flavor of PMP because of the okay. job market that's out there. You know, I, yeah. I work in IT, so I'm looking at IT PM roles. So obviously Agile's huge right now. That's and cool. Well, we'll have a course pretty soon. So, uh, so that's good. I just got to get this other one recreated. And uh, once I do that, half of it's Agile. So, but then I'll just make an ACP course too. So. Oh, okay. So that's cool. Well, I mean, don't try to recreate the wheel too much. I, I know that the seven day accelerator is like the bee's knees right now, but for someone like me that mm -hmm. was not like a project manager, I think the e-course was a great space for me. Yeah. Um, PMI won't let me sell an e-course after the new year. Like they say, I, yeah, because of the way they change it. I'm not legally allowed to sell an e-course. I don't know if it's legal, but uh, like if I'm with them as assigned to PMI or like uh, official, like you can't sell an e-course. And so I have to be creative and sell wow. uh, a coaching program with videos. Wow. Okay. Uh, yeah. Gotcha. So, yeah, but yeah, no, I, I think like the detail of that is, uh, of the regular courses. Like some people need that. Like, I it's needed good. It. yeah, yeah. yeah um, so that's good. Can I ask your Can I ask your feedback on something? Because I'm sure. I'm extremely competitive, and I'm disappointed that I didn't get a better score than I did. I, I really thought I was do better than it. So, okay, so I had two low targets: initiating and planning, mm -hmm. and then I had two targets and one above target. And I just am like, okay, am I the only person out there that done that bad, or are there what? other people that pass who? I have two low targets. Um, like well, below what you've seen. Yeah. Well, I mean, below target. <laughs> all right. So you probably you got a below target on like initiating, right? Yeah. And so I'm it's like, like a small a sample size. It's like a small number of questions, and so I'm not exactly sure the scale they use to measure uh, rank and stuff. Um, my thing is, they think they take a sample of people that take the same test or the same time, and then they base you against them so yeah you did do worse than those people but uh like um i wouldn't freak out because that's a small population planning is pretty big um yeah the other things how they code them uh no i mean like i've seen as far as like the people well you you definitely beat all the people that didn't pass that's yeah, a, I guess. <laughs> like like that's good and i've seen many of people that are like right on that line they got like targets and then they're like right on the line on either side of it. So, uh, I mean, okay. I don't, I wouldn't freak out. I mean, we, some of these questions are like ridiculous. They like, are. I can't even tell you. Like, I yeah. wish I, I wish I could like share them, but yeah. Um, yeah like some of them just seem like, mm, I don't, I don't agree. Um, yeah. but yeah, I wouldn't freak. I mean, I know you're competitive, but, uh, 
Nothing you I mean, can it's do. over. Yeah, I mean, it's I over. passed, you know. Yeah, I did well, so that's that's pretty good. I mean, you did above target in some or one or something like that, so that's pretty good. It's, I've seen I've seen worse. You don't – like, people come to me all the time with, like, dreadful scores. So, uh, okay. it's okay. You did all fine. Right. All right. Good deal. All right. Well, I'll see you later. I'm going to go take a – I'm going to go nap. Go to sleep. All right. Bye-bye. <laughs> see ya. All right. Bye.